Okay guys, uh, I am attempting to make a very hard video, well a very hard subject, best militia rifle, patrol rifle for Australian civilians that is. We know that we're not allowed to have semi-automatic rifles, or automatic rifles obviously. And if you take the opinion of other people around the world, we're, we're disarmed and we can't do anything. I don't agree with that at all, okay? Number one, militias, civilian defense corps or whatever, their objective isn't to be frontline battle troops, okay? But it doesn't also mean that they're absolutely hopeless and no good and a waste of time and effort. I think they're absolutely a valuable part, a massively valuable part that can be added to an existing professional defence force and part-time defence force like the reserves or paramilitary etc. So so what options do we have? Well the question of the best is there is no best. The best rifle you have is the best militia rifle that you can own. The one that you shoot the best is your favourite, the one that you feel most comfortable with if this is a self-funded like American Confederate Civil War sort of style where you just got to turn up with whatever gear you got and that's all you can use, that's all you got to use. So it's as simple as that, okay? So we don't actually have a dedicated, we don't even have a militia. The government's not going to help us with one for whatever reason, but there's everyone with half a brain knows there's definitely a, a use for them. Some people will say, join the Army Reserve. No, it's not flexible enough. There's too many requirements. Uh, there's way more people that would love to do something that might have injuries, they're too old, um, things get in the way. So they, they need something more flexible where they can turn up when they can. We, we just appreciate them for showing some interest and learning some skills. Like the firearms. Obviously, it's way better to be able to have just a couple of rifles that are mass-produced by a government force or supplied by, by government funding. Uh, at this point in time, that's not happening. So we have to do something ourselves and be prepared as ourselves, train ourselves, do everything without any government support, any police involvement. <clears throat> it's something that we can make a, a hobby and you don't even need firearms for it, but this is specifically the firearm side of it. What can we do within the, within the laws that we have right now in Australia? Which pretty much limits us to bolt actions, pump actions, single shot rifles and lever actions. Okay, so obviously you want something that's going to be... A militiaman is going to be carrying a firearm way, way, way more than he's going to be shooting it, okay? No different to a guy who goes patrolling for pigs, a bowman who goes bow hunting, you know, someone who hunts big game animals in the top end of Australia. Be walking and stalking and observing what's going on far more than you're actually going to be shooting. So on that regard, you don't need... You don't want a heavy rifle. You want something that's as lightweight as possible, probably as compact as possible, but something that's got enough punch to knock down what your what your quarry is, or something that might pop up and surprise you. Um, that'll keep that'll protect you, keep you alive, but put the adversary down. Calibers is another video altogether, but generally. The easy option would be 223, 308, okay? That's what the military uses. They've both got decades of experience. 308 hits harder and has more downrange punch. 5.56 or 223. It's very effective up to, you know, reasonable distances. We'll say inside three to 400 meters. Of course, there's variation, so it can go a little bit further either side, depending on depending on variables. The amount of ammunition you can carry is important, 
So the bigger the the bigger the round. So this is a 7.62 or a 308 dummy round, okay? But it's just a visual. And the same with this. This is a 5.56 um, dummy round as well. So um, they're just visual comparisons. So this is obviously more powerful. This isn't quite so powerful, but it's a lot smaller. can be put into a smaller rifle. Everything's less recoil. Pretty nice flat trajectory. Lightweight rifle, so it's quite accurate to usable ranges. This thing here punches a lot harder, but physically bigger, so it's going to be in a bigger, heavier rifle, and it recoils a lot, so much more. I don't know how many times more, but considerably. This right in a lightweight rifle, this uh, cartridge can be definitely unpleasant, and it can be too much for a lot of people, okay? Where this one's very easy to shoot. It's not very intimidating. You'll see some photographs I put at the beginning of this video, and they're different patrol rifles, bolt-action patrol rifles that are available and from manufacturers so they're ready on the shelves ready to go and you'll and you'll get all of them in 5.56 or 223 and 308 or 7.62 by 51 now the very last photo that i put up there is a lee enfield jungle carbine okay that was that came into service sort of after world war ii it was an experimental rifle and that's why i've got this little book here opened up to where I have it because this is 100th anniversary of Lithgow small arms manufacturing so they made all the Australian rifles so they they um, experimented with short Lee Enfields and I think the best the best patrol rifle in my opinion hasn't been created yet and I think it will take a mixture of one of the best battle bolt action battle rifles ever made which you could argue against which I believe is the uh, SMLE or the short magazine Lee Enfield British rifle chambered in 303 British so Lithgow did make a couple of experimental lightweight and carbine versions okay this one's chambered in 7.62 or 308 takes a SLR FNAL magazine it's got a peep sight and muzzle brake on the front bayonet lug okay um, but they didn't have a lot of success with that um, this one here was a shortened and lightened version still chambered in 303 British you can see this one has closer resemblance to the jungle carbine okay so and then if you mix some of the other features of the patrol rifles like about some of the commercial patrol style scout rifles that you can buy or a short carbine that you might want to use as a patrol or a militia rifle especially chambered in 308 okay as you'll see in the at the photo in the photos in the beginning of the video, a lot of them have a really huge single column box magazine. If it's made of steel, it's very heavy. They're going to be very expensive and difficult to produce and buy. Uh, and if you wanted to carry a decent amount of ammunition, say 50 rounds of ready-to-go ammunition, you're going to have to carry 10 of these things. They're going to weigh a lot and they're going to cost you a hell of a lot of money to carry around 50 rounds of ammo ready to use. Okay, where on the, on the other hand, the Lee Enfield used a charger bridge. It held 10 rounds in the magazine. It's a lot shorter. The magazine's a lot shorter because it's double stacked. And... Um, it's shorter, so it doesn't stick down as far. It doesn't get in the road of trying to shoot prone or trying to shoot out of a window or over an obstacle. A, a long magazine that sticks down gets in the road. When you're carrying it on your back, it digs into your back, etc. I don't like that style of magazine. And that would also be heavier. 
So I do like the idea of either a, a 10 shot floor plate, a 10 shot rifle that's double stacked that holds, you know, eight to 10 rounds in the inside the stock of the rifle itself. You could have a swollen belly on the floor plate so it holds a couple of extra rounds or something like this that's a short magazine hence the short magazine Lee Enfield and fed by stripper clips. Another way to go about it is you could have a short magazine or any magazine and then be able to use stripper clips to feed the magazine itself. Okay, so um, then that way you only need to carry, say, maybe two magazines ready to go, and then you can strip a clip feed your spare magazine. I see that as a viable option too. But anyway, none of those firearms offer that function. Now the next one is, uh, you will see kind of like this one, but on all the other patrol rifles, especially in 308, they have very short barrels, Big muzzle brakes. I hate people shooting near me with muzzle brakes. They, they reduce recoil because you've got a, the, the rifle's basically too light for the cartridge for most people to shoot. So to get around that, they put a muzzle brake on, which reduces recoil, but it blows all of the concussion, all of that noise out of the side of the rifle. And it's coming, instead of going away from the shooter, it's coming back towards the shooter and the people who are around him on the firing line. That's terrible. It's bad for your ears. I hate it, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't like it. Okay, so one way of getting around that is by using a more efficient cartridge. Okay, so this is a 6.5 Grendel cartridge. 6.5 Grendel cartridge, okay? Basically, an improved version or an improved case designed on the 7.62 by 39 AK SKS round. So that's blown out shoulders, straightened the taper of the cartridge, and neck down, this one's neck down to 7.62. Oh, sorry, 6.5 caliber. So effectively, what you get is. These are the two projectiles. So to move this big heavy projectile downrange at usable speed, you need a lot more powder. And this is where the 6.5 comes into it. Effectively very similar in length. And the 6.5 Grendel shoots to a, a very similar point of impact as the 308, but it does it so much more efficiently with a lighter bullet, lighter projectile, and less powder. So the combination of less powder, lighter bullet, means there's less recoil to begin with in the, in the light, short and light firearm, so it doesn't kick you as hard to begin with. There's less muzzle jump, so you'll be back on target quicker you'll lose sight of your pitch, uh, sight picture under recoil, and then when you come back down, uh, the the 6.5 will allow you to come down quicker because the gun won't be, the firearm won't be moving as much. So, um, and then on a not, and then because there's less powder as well, there's less boom, less less explosion, everything's more efficient, so there's not as much noise coming out the end of the barrel, uh, and it becomes, a lot more efficient so you get more bang for your buck so to speak uh, the shorter the shorter rifle also degrades the power the shorter barrel degrades the power of the 308 so it's not as powerful as it should be so in my opinion it's not really efficient to have a lightened rifle in a full power cartridge um, because A, you're losing some of the punch that the bigger full-size round has. You're gaining more, It's and usually it's in a bigger firearm, so it's heavier anyway, and it kicks harder. And there's a lot more noise that comes out the other end of it, big flashes and that, you know, so I kind of don't really like that concept, okay?
I'll end it there and I'll come back.